Saint Augustine commentary on Psalm 49 following And you thou the night yearn for the morning think not because the night has life the morning too has not life doth then he that sleeps live and he that rises live not is not he that sleeps more like death and who are they that sleep they whom the apostle Paul rouses, if they choose but to awake. For to certain, he says, Awake you that sleepst and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Ephesians 5.14 They then that are lightened by Christ watch now, but the fruit of their watchings appears not yet. In the morning it shall appear, that is, when doubtful things of this world shall have passed away. For these are very night. For do they not appear to you like darkness? But they on whom men have trampled, and who were ridiculed for believing, shall hear from life itself, whom they have for shepherd. Come you, blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom which was prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Therefore the righteous shall reign over them, not now but in the morning. Let no one say, Wherefore am I a Christian? I will no one, I would rule the wicked. Be not in haste, you shall reign but in the morning, and the help of them shall grow old in hell from their glory. Now they have glory in hell, they shall grow old. What is the help of them? Help for money, help for, from friends, help from their own might. But when a man shall be dead, in that day shall perish all his thoughts. How great glory he seemed to have among men, while he lived, so great oldness and decay of punishments shall he have when he shall be dead in hell. Nevertheless, God shall redeem my soul. Verse 15. Behold the voice of one hoping in the future. Nevertheless, God shall redeem my soul. Perhaps it is the voice of one still wishing to be relieved from oppression. Someone is in prison, he says, God shall redeem my soul. Someone is in bond, God shall redeem my soul. Someone is suffering peril by sea, is being tossed by waves and raging tempests. What says he? God shall redeem my soul. They would be delivered for the sake of this life. Not such is the voice of this man. Hear what follows. God shall redeem my soul from the hand of hell when he shall have received me. He is speaking of this redemption which Christ now shows in himself, for he has descended into hell and has ascended into heaven. What we have seen in the head we have found in the body, for what we have believed in the head they that have seen have themselves told us, and by themselves we have seen, for we are all one body. Romans 12.5 But are they better that here we worse to whom it has been told? Not to say the life itself, our shepherd himself. For he rebukes a certain disciple of his, doubting and desiring to handle his scares. And when he had handled the scares and had cried out, saying, My Lord and my God. John 20.28 20, seeing his disciple doubting and looking to the whole world about to believe. Because you have seen me, he says, you have believed. Blessed are they that see not and believe. But God shall redeem my soul from the land of hell when he has received me. Here then what? Labor, oppression, tribulation, temptation, except nothing else. Where joy? In future hope.
Perchance, your heart says, Wretch that I am, I suppose no purpose I have believed. God does not regard things human. God therefore does awaken us, and he says, What? Fear not, thou a man have become rich. Verse 16 For why did you fear, because a man has become rich? You feared that you had believed to no purpose, that perchance you should have lost the labor of your faith and the hope of your conversion, because perchance there has come in your way gain with guilt, and you could have been rich if you had seized upon that same gain with the guilt and needed not have labored. And you, remembering what God has threatened, have refrained from guilt and have contempt the gain. You see another man that has made gain by guilt and has suffered no harm, and you fear to be good. Fear not, says the Spirit of God to you. Thou a man shall have become rich. Wouldest thou not have eyes but for things present, things future he has promised, who has risen again, peace in this world and repose in this life? He has not promised. Every man does seek repose. A good thing he is seeking, but not in, not in the proper region thereof he is seeking it. There is no peace in this life. In heaven has been promised that which on earth we are seeking. In the world to come has been promised that which in this world we are seeking. Fear not, thou a man be made rich, and thou the glory of his house be multiplied. Wherefore, fear not, for when he shall die, he shall not receive anything. Verse 17 You see him living, consider him dying. Thou markst what he has here, mark what he takes with him. What does he take with him? He has store of gold, he has store of silver, numerous estates, slaves. He dies, these remain. He knows not from for whom. For though he leaves them for whom he will, he keeps them not for whom he will. For many have gained even what was not left them, and many have lost what was left them. All these things then remain, and he takes with him what? Perhaps someone says, he takes that with him in which he is wound, and that which is expended upon him for a costly and marble tomb, to erect a monument, this he takes with him. I say, not even this, for these things are presented to him without his feeling them. If you deck a man sleeping and not awake, he has the decorations with him on the coach. Perhaps the decorations are resting upon the body of him as he lies, and perhaps he sees himself in tatters during sleep. What he feels is more to him than what he feels not. Thou even this, when he shall have awaked, will not be, yet to him sleeping that which he saw in sleep was more than that which he felt not. Why then, brethren, should men say to themselves, Let money be spent at my death? Why do I leave my hairs rich? Many things will they have of mine. Let me to have something of my own for my body. What shall a dead body have? What shall rotting flesh have? What shall flesh not feeling have? If that rich man had anything whose tongue was dry, then man has something of his own. My brethren, do we read in the gospel that this rich man appeared in the fire with all silken and fine linen coverings? Was he of such sort in hell as he was in feastings at table? When he thirsted and desired a drop, all those things were not there. 
Therefore man carries not with him anything, nor does the dead take with him that which the burial takes. For where feeling is, there is the man. Where is no feeling, the man is not. There lies fallen the vessel which contains the man, the house with which held the man. The body let us call the house, the spirit let us call the inhabitant of the house. The spirit is tormented in hell. What does it profit him that the body lies in spices and perfumes, wound in costly linens? Just as if the master of the house should be sent into banishment, and you should garnish the walls of his house. He in banishment is in need and does faint with hunger. He scarce finds to himself one hovel where he may snatch a sleep. And you say, Happy is he, for his house has been garnished. Who would not judge that you were either jesting or wast mad? Thou dost garnish the body, the spirit is tormented. Give something to the spirit, and you have given something to the dead man. But what will you give him when he desired one drop and received not? For the man scorned to send before him anything. Wherefore scorned? Because this their way is a stumbling block to them. He minded not any but the present life. He thought not but how he might be buried, wound in costly vestments. His soul was taken from him as the Lord says, You fool! This night your soul shall be taken from you, and whose shall those things be which you have provided? Luke twelve twenty. And that is fulfilled which this song says, Fear not, thou a man be made rich, and thou the glory of his house be multiplied. For when he shall die he shall not receive anything, nor shall his glory descend together with him. Let your love observe, for his soul shall be blessed in his life. Verse 18 As long as he lived, he did well for himself. This all men say, but say falsely. It is a blessing from the mind of the blesser, not from the truth itself. For what do you say? Because he ate and drank, because he did what he chose, because he feasted sumptuously, Therefore he did well with himself. I say, he did ill for himself. Not I say, but Christ. He did ill for himself, for that which man, when he feasted sumptuously every day, was supposed to do well with himself. But when he began to burn in hell, then that which was supposed to be well was found to be ill. For what he had eaten with men above, he digested in hell beneath. Unrighteousness, I mean, brethren, on which he used to feast. He used to eat costly banquets with the mouth of flesh. With his heart's mouth he used to eat unrighteousness. What he ate with his heart's mouth with men above, this he digested amid those punishments in the places beneath. And verily he had eaten for a time, he digested ill for everlasting. Is then unrighteousness eaten? Perhaps someone says, What is it that he says, unrighteousness eaten? It is not that I say, hear the scripture, as a sore grape is vexation to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is unrighteousness to them that use it. Proverbs 10.26 For he that shall have eaten unrighteousness, that is, he that shall have had unrighteousness willfully, shall not be able to eat righteousness. For righteousness is bread. Who is bread? I am the living bread which came down from heaven. John 6.51 Himself is the bread of our heart. Is then even righteousness eaten? If it were not eaten, the Lord would not have said, 
Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Matthew 5, 6 Therefore, since his soul shall be blessed in life, in life it shall be blessed, in death it shall be tormented. He shall confess to you when you shall have done him good. Be not of such sort, brethren. See ye how that to this end we say these words, to this end we sing, to this end we treat, to this end toil. Do not these things. Your business does prove you. Sometimes in your business ye hear the truth and you blaspheme. The church ye blaspheme. Wherefore? Because you are Christians. If so it be, I betake myself to Donatus' party. I will be a heathen. Wherefore? Because you have eaten bread and the teeth are in pain. When you saw the bread itself, you praised, you begin to eat and the teeth are in pain. That is, when you were hearing the word of God, you praised. When it is said to you, do this, you blaspheme. Do not so ill. Say this. The bread is good, but I can't eat it. But now if you see with the eyes you praise, when you begin to close the teeth, you say, Bad is this bread. And like him that made it. So it comes to pass that you confess to God when God does you good and you lie when you sing, I will always bless God, his praise is ever in my mouth. How always? If always, gain. Always he is blessed. If sometime there is loss, he is not blessed but blasphemed. Forsooth you bless away, forsooth his praise is ever in your mouth. You will be such as just now he describes. He will confess to you when you shall have done him good. He shall enter even unto the generation of his fathers. Verse 19. That is, he shall imitate his fathers. For the unrighteous that now are, have brothers, have fathers. Unrighteous men of old are the fathers of the present. And they that are now unrighteous are the fathers of unrighteous posterity. Just as the fathers of the righteous, the righteous of old, are the fathers of the righteous that now are. And they that now are, are the fathers of them that are, not, that are to be. The Holy Spirit has will to show that righteousness is not evil when men murmur against her. But these men have their father from the beginning, even to the generation of their fathers. Two men Adam begat, and in one was unrighteousness, in one was righteousness. Unrighteousness in Cain, righteousness in Abel. 1 John 3.12 Unrighteousness seemed to prevail over righteousness because Cain unrighteous slew Abel righteous. Genesis 4.8 In the night. Is it so in the morning? Nay. But the righteous shall reign over them in the morning. The morning shall come and it shall be seen where Abel is and where Cain. So all men who are after Cain and so all who are after Abel, even unto the end of the world, he shall enter even unto the generation of his fathers. Even to eternity he shall not see light. Because even when he was here, he was in darkness, taking pleasure in false goods and not loving real goods. Even so he shall go hence into hell, from the darkness of his dreams, the darkness of torment shall receive him. Therefore, even to eternity he shall not see light. But wherefore this? What he has written in the middle of the psalm, the same also he has written at the end. Man thou he was in honour, understood not, was compared to the beasts without sense, and was made like to them. Verse 20. But ye, brethren, consider that you, be may, that you be men made after the image and likeness of God. The image of God, Genesis 1.26, is within, is not in the body, 
is not in these ears which you see and eyes and nostrils and palate and hands and feet, but is made nevertheless, wherein is the intellect, wherein is the mind, wherein the power of discovering truth, wherein is faith, wherein is your hope, wherein your charity. There God has his image. There at least ye perceive and see that this, these things pass away. For so he has said in an other psalm, Thou man walks in an image, yet he is disquieted in vain. He heaps up treasures and knows not for whom he shall gather them. Be not disquieted, for of whatsoever kind these things be, they are transitory. If you are men, who being in honor understand? For if being men in honor ye understand not, you are compared to the beasts without sense, and are made like to them.